Mark Hutner has been involved in the areas of design, test, DFT, and data analytics for more than uh, 20 years. Uh, last year, he joined a Protean Techs, where he is the Senior Director of Product Marketing. And before that, he was at Teradyne for over 20 years. Welcome, Mark. Thanks, Ira. So my talk today is really about elevating known good die with deep data analytics. And as Ira said, my name is Mark Hutner. I'm the Senior Director of Product Marketing for Protean Techs. I'd also like to thank MapTech for the invitation to talk today. So you've probably heard about Proteantex and how we're changing the industry with deep data health and performance monitoring around advanced electronics. Now we were founded in 2017 by the co-founders of Mellanox and we're addressing these industry challenges at scale with a multidisciplinary approach. We have more than 50 design wins and we're addressing data center, automotive, communications, as well as mobile. And we have uh, people around the world for a five-year-old startup, you know, in the U.S. as well as in Europe and, uh, and in Asia. And we have a fine variety of investors that are listed at the bottom of the page, which I won't go over. So what are the challenges for those core markets of data center, automotive, and uh, communications? And Tomcat went over a bunch of them. And it's really about electronics everywhere, which is 24-7 availability, software as a service, and how do I really maintain uptime? And those markets also demand advanced electronics technologies like multi-fit chip modules, and that ends up driving uh, quality and performance trade-offs, which we're going to talk about in the next couple of slides, and surging costs. So how do we balance all those things? So the key uh, challenges that we're facing is really with these complex systems is really how do I deal with debug time? How do I improve it from 12 to 18 months to something better? How do I deal with warranty claims? You know, could I get it below 2.7%? And how do I deal with RMAs, which could be as high as 50% fault not found? And ultimately, it's really about the reliability of these end systems. So it could be number of cars failing per hour, or it could be your data center uptime. And we believe that we're addressing a lot of these challenges. So taking a, a double click onto these challenges and looking specifically around the high performance uh, data center, it's really how do you avoid service disruptions? Like the one that I was faced with earlier in the summer with Rogers going down. And how do I do this where I'm monitoring systems without impacting the end system and avoid expensive redundancies or costly replacements? And ultimately it's about lifetime reliability and safety concerns. Now, it isn't just Proteantex that's talking about this, it's really market leaders, like the ones listed at the bottom of the slide. It's issues like silent data corruption due to latent defects and aging, which could affect your DPPM rate. And it could be stuff like frequently unexplained hardware failures or no issues found. Or it could be computational loads that are running on chips that actually passed all of the manufacturing tests. So the question is, why did that happen? And then in the case of automotive, it's really the relationship between um, the current safety standards, like with FUSA, and the whole hardware software reliability uh, into the field and over its entire lifetime. So there's lots of big challenges that we have to face with as an industry. Now, the way that Proteantex is approaching this is really around visibility at every stage. And one way that we're addressing it is really around using machine learning analytics as well as our onboard agents that Tomcat had talked about. And we operate at every stage. So at chip design and chip production, we're looking at things like variability analysis, uh, production visibility, uh, higher confidence ramp, outlier detection, and better performance and yield. Now, as you move into the system production and in field, it's really about performance optimization, workload analysis, environment monitoring, as well as in the field, it's around performance monitoring and alerts of failures before they actually fail and predictive maintenance. And ultimately, this leads to a faster time to market, a, a better DPPM rate, uh, reduced costs, as well as failure prevention. So really important things for industry. And the place that this really starts with is known good die. So how do we really start this? And what Proteantex has done is really a multi-pillar solution that I'm gonna talk about over the next three slides. And it starts with deep data, which is this universal chip telemetry and what uh, we refer to as agents like Tomcat referred to, where we're taking on-chip measurements. We're then applying machine learning to it, which is really how do we, and it's co-designed to what the agents are measuring. 
So it's very specialized kinds of inferences that we're doing. And then that can be then deployed in the cloud or at the edge, which are both very important things about how to use the data. So it might be uh, fleet monitoring or it might be actionable insights. Hold on, I've got a little. So diving a little bit deeper into the universal chip telemetry, it's really about how to use these on-chip agents that we're building into people's devices. And what they do is take parametric measurements that are providing you much higher coverage and higher resolution than was previously possible. So that will then also help you get a better visibility. Now, we have minimal PPA impact, and we operate not only in test mode, but also in mission mode. And we can sense the surrounding electronics as well as uh, be used for application optimization. Now, if you think about it, the kinds of agents that we can do can be seen on the right-hand side, which is really around if you start at the bottom um, in terms of classification of process and design profiling. So you can get an idea at T0 with your known good die how well it is working. Now, that can then also be incorporated one step further into performance and degradation monitoring that could be for things like aging models. So you could use it for HTOL, but that can extend into the field for aging prediction. And we can do other things with our agents as we build them into more complex things in terms of operational monitoring. And lastly, which is really, really important for known good die, is really around interconnect and performance monitoring, where we're applying the same techniques and the data pathways to understand the health of those links. So there's lots of good things that will change how you're thinking about the known good die, as well as how you're thinking about them throughout the whole ecosystem. So the next pillar that we're gonna talk about is really around the platform itself. And it is cloud-based, cloud agnostic, and it's really scalable to what uh, your problems are as you're thinking about your parts and the number of parts. Now there- Mark, Yeah, go ahead. But before you get into the platform, Yep. you know back to the agents mm -hmm. um so do you have to do like any ip vendor you you have to actually build and design the actual circuitry for the different process nodes so you you have to be like any other ip vendor even yes. though you have standardized functionality you you have to bring it up for each process node um we're a combination of hard and soft ip where um, those techniques extend across different process nodes, and we do qualify per process node. Okay. Thank you. No problem. So I mentioned that we're cloud agnostic. We have built-in targeted solutions that use machine learning and provide actionable insights, and that's built off of those agents where we really have uh, created techniques to measure very interesting things and create those insights. Now it's open for innovation. So we do have an SDK that's enabled and people can also use their own ML algorithms into that environment as well. Now we're, we're getting some other interesting data sources in as well. So if you have some other special measurements that you can apply in there, we can bring it into our platform and do other things. And as I mentioned, we're actionable not only in the cloud, but we're also actionable at the edge itself. So, and this can be done in near real time uh, environments. So it could be at a tester or it could be in your end product as well. And it's a minimum footprint solution. Um, now, what I've, I've done here is just given you a sense of what we can do. There's actually many more applications um, that we can do within our analytics platform, and those can get deployed into the edge. Um, and this is really, really important for known good die. So it's things like, how do I connect um, the pre-silicon data, the simulation data into the post-silicon world and then compare it and I can compare it not only at the lot level, I can go down into an area of the chip and understand what the variation is. So it could be certain kinds of effects. Now I can correlate between different stages. So it could be wafer package, SLT, and into modules. So throughout the whole supply chain that Tomcat has described, I can do things like performance tuning, and then I can link the data between like HTOL and reliability testing, and then take that into the field as well with other knowledge and then find things like latent defects. Now, as you move into production, uh, you can do latent defect detection and it could be things on IDDQ like I'll describe in a minute, but it could also be in terms of uh, performing path, performance paths. 
power reduction and test time reduction are also uh, right in our wheelhouse. And lastly, uh, in terms of things like RMAs, because we have this common data language, we can then connect the data between different stages and we can help reduce those fault not found scenarios because we can really dive down to the differences between the stages. Now, I'm just going to touch on this ever so briefly because I think it has more to do with system talk, but uh, we can also do things like performance optimization for system NPI, so how you're bringing up your system. You can use a chip actually with our agents as a detector for the environment itself. And you can do things like performance uh, indicators and improve debuggability by understanding the visibility into the system. And lastly, as you get into the field, you can do things like predictive maintenance, continuous performance monitoring, other real-time applications like power um, reduction or power modulation and um, you know, time to faster time to resolution as you get to the field. So I'm gonna dive into some use cases because I think that's the more important part of the talk and how we're looking at known good die. And the place that I'm gonna start is some real data that's from a customer and something that they found. It's from a seven nanometer part um, where they used a traditional IDDQ approach. And once they turned on our technique, so they had the data, but they didn't turn on the technique, we proved with our technology, and they actually found it, it was finding a, a latent defect in an RMA. So what we were doing was a estimator-based outlier detection, which is personalized per chip. And it's a multi-dimensional outlier detection that's using various agents that we have inserted into the device. You can use it for things like real yield reclamation, or you could use it for RMAs. In this particular case, we're talking more about avoiding a latent defect. So it's how to avoid failures into the field. So if you notice from the picture in the center, it's a traditional IDDQ measurement. You would set your limits. It would either be uh, at a fixed point or you can use dynamic limits with pad or bad neighbor uh, kinds of detection. But what we're doing, which is unique, is we're then connecting our agent data and the um, early yield data and then saying, okay, for a particular set of agent measurements, what should the IDDQ measurement be? And what our model, could, which then gets deployed into the edge, can then say is, you know, this, this device should actually be closer to that center black line. And it actually is an outlier. And the arrow that's sort of on the, the right-hand side was something that came back as an RMA once they turned this on as a screen in the platform. So this is a very exciting result on real silicon, on a real system. Another really important use case and something for known good die, and it's really about shift left, is really how do I correlate the differences between stages? And it could be at a population stage. So how was it different between final test and system test, or wafer test to system level test? Or it could be all the way down to a chip level where you start to isolate. So we can find a part that even is in the middle of the distribution there and then link it back to hotspots. So what we're doing is an accurate correlation and validation between each test stage, and we can help you determine where it is different. So this is amazing. It's what I wanted as a chip designer when I was debugging problems. So I can then decide what the right test limits, what the right guard bands, and really break down what's going on. And this ends up leading to a better characterization, better understanding of operation and environmental and stress impacts. So this is a really exciting way of connecting the various stages and you can then put that coverage at the right point for the best cost. So you can then refer to things like the cost of test model that the HIR has put out and you can sort of optimize the best way to do that. Uh, another really interesting application you can do thanks to the agents is do a VDD min predictor at high volume manufacturing, and you can do it at a much earlier point. So by using our agents, you can then at a wafer test, predict what the um, voltage will be for optimal operation at a particular frequency or at a particular voltage. So what we can do is deploy these models that are trained off of early silicon data, and then um, compare that to measurements that we're taking at wafer test and then deploy that at the uh, product level. So you can then have an optimal 
uh, F max or voltage, and it can be used at a very early stage. Um, the last use case for known good dye is actually a very exciting one, which is, and it's been a really hard thing that I know Ira and I have discussed a lot of times in the past as part of the 3D IC conference. And it's really, how do you test dye to dye interfaces? Now, the way you do it today is you use something like a PRBS at a fixed frequency. And it's really, is it passing or is it failing? And you couldn't do much more than that other than shmooing the clock or shmooing the voltage and usually didn't have those kinds of controls. So what we have done is added a number of agents onto the link itself, and that's providing you a way to grade each lane. And that's giving you 100% coverage, and it can be done in mission as real data is flowing across it. So what it's telling you is in terms of what is the timing margin on those paths, and you can see also how that's going to, as you go into the system, how that's aging as well. So this is really going far beyond pass-fail testing. It is done at, at package test uh, because you do need to connect the two chips together, but it's really giving you a sense for where you are in terms of how reliable that link is and uh, how it's changing over time. So this is exciting, not only for package tests, but as you move into the field. So it's an exciting so, piece of technology. So with it, with this particular um, set of agents, can you do some type of pre-grading? So when you do selection and harvesting, uh, you, you match the, the dye for interface capabilities? Uh, no, it's really when the two dyes are connected, but it only has to be on one side of the link. So... Yes. Assuming the other side has a loop back of some sort. Um, we, we can go into the... I guess. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> we can go into the details on that uh, offline to this. So, But it is, it is kind of neat. And it is the kinds of things that we were discussing many years ago. Yep. So now the, the really cool thing is, you know, we're deploying these models that get trained in our cloud-based platform down at the edge. So for something like test, you know, once you've done this correlation for something like VDD min, you can train some models and then deploy that into a tester, a package test or, or wafer test even, and then provide that at a much earlier stage and then link it to our various agents. So it would be something like our process agents or our design agents. And then you can use that to do decisions. So then you can start to say, what is the right test coverage and have different kinds of test flows depending on what uh, you're generating as an insight. So this will really be a game changer for the economics of test uh, by using data-driven uh, techniques. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a jump from the known good die and talk about the systems and how to better optimize them. Uh, but I hope that that first section gave you a sense for what our technology can do. And there really is many more use cases, which we couldn't really get into uh, given the short time. Um, now, two use cases that I really want to get into is really about system performance monitoring. And it's a really hard problem as you're putting many more chips together in a single MCM or even between on a board itself. So what we can start to do is take our agent data and we can do this in a time-based approach and then see the impact of the software running on the hardware. So what we're seeing across time is the sequence that's on the left-hand side of the screen, which is configuring a part. We're setting up the part with a start operation on some software. It ends, there's some idle in the middle, and then you can start another piece of software. And you can see exactly those impacts at the die level. You can see a bump up in the middle and then the impact of the idle and the bump up at the end. And what you can start to do is then correlate with the agents, sort of what's really happening at the chip level and then where it, it's going wrong or different than what you expected. So it could be a margin problem or an IR drop or a workload difference or cycle to cycle jitter. So you can then correlate why the system isn't performing the way that you expected. So this will really help in bring up as well as um, diagnosing RMAs and performance tuning. So there's lots of great applications that you can do it with this. Now, one application that gets into this is really health monitoring of systems, 
for something like automotive or a data center. So what you have in the plot on the right is a system where we've created an aging model that can be deployed uh, into the field. And at um, you see that there's T1 and T2. Um, initially, you've in this particular picture, you've deployed one software uh, piece of software, and you're measuring the aging and degradation. And at T1, they said, "Oh, geez, we're going to fail relatively soon," and then predicted it to be actually between T1 and T2. And they came up with another piece of software. And what this example is showing is you can then change the aging rate by applying different workloads. So by using the agents, you can then uh, not only understand the impact, but also predict when that system will fail. So this is a really interesting way for things like data centers and cars and about how to keep it running for as long as possible. And we're providing this in mission mode. So it's not um, only a test mode that's run periodically. It's providing much higher coverage and it can be used on millions of critical paths and provide you where there's low margin. And it can be used to monitor the, the system environment so you can see where those stresses are coming from. So this is a very interesting way and we're providing these models into an end system. So, um, you know, we're, we've already, as I mentioned earlier slides, that we already have 50 plus uh, tape outs um, and we have real silicon results that are coming from our customers. And it's things like an 18% power reduction at the chip level and where we've traced it back to some guard banding that was an IR drop at SLT. Now, it could be something like a yield improvement that this other customer had found, uh, where it was due to a sensitivity in terms of, of process and design margin, or it could be a miscorrelation between uh, silicon and simulation, uh, like with this five nanometer chip on the bottom left. Now, we, we also detected an outlier detection of about 5%. Uh, for the middle customer. And we were able at the system level for this automotive startup, uh, help them with a board redesign. So we could isolate thanks to our agents and understanding of the system. And then they uh, basically improve their end product because of it. So there's lots of great use cases. We're getting more and more with more silicon coming back. And it's just really exciting about what people can do uh, with, our, with our technology. So in conclusion, you know, the deep data analytics, so what you can do with our agents mixed with our analytics environment and the models that it can deploy is really changing how you're thinking about known good die. It's really providing a new level of uh, silicon and system understanding, which enables you to make those shift left decisions that we've been talking about for known good dies and known good systems for a long time. Uh, we're providing you visibility for interactions between chiplets uh, within a package, we can help you diagnose them uh, in multiple ways between your software and your hardware. And these, these methods are transportable between every stage. So you're now able to compare the results from one stage to another stage, which was a real reason why RMAs were so hard before. So what we've done is we've provided this common data language that you can then use um, in a common test technique. Now, the other thing that isn't on this slide, which is a, a, a huge benefit of our system, is we don't actually know what the software is that's running on your system. So from a sense of security, um, we can see the impact on the system, but we don't necessarily know what that workload was. So then you can help recreate those cases. So there's lots of really interesting dynamics about how we uh, use our agents that are able to be run in mission mode, but then they're also um, help you protect um, your, the way that you're using the system. So I'd like to uh, end by, by thanking MEPTEP once again for inviting us. Uh, I'm sure the panel will be uh, insightful and with many great questions. So I'm looking forward to participating in that. Thank you, Mark. Uh, let, me, let me ask uh, some questions. Um, and this one uh, question that was asked goes back to the DTT timing margin. Um, how would you detect latent defects at time zero? As you move the field, if the interconnect fails, fails later, it really doesn't help you. But and and how do you deal with things where you don't have redundancy in the interface? Yeah. So what what it will tell you is sort of the rate at which it's changing over time. So it will help you predict that point. Uh, if you don't have redundancy, if you do have redundancy, 
it will tell you at what point you really need to apply that redundancy and help you with your repair strategy. So I think there's multiple ways that you can use it, uh, depending on the the kinds of IOs, you know, and and sort of the density of it. For for something like an HBI or an HBM, I think it would be a very interesting way to do it because there you have repair lanes. Uh, even with um, BOW, there was a repair lane that was proposed fairly early on. So I think you can get into some interesting use cases. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a question about the part average testing uh, example used. Uh, it was just curious, the, the person in the audience wanted to know whether it was a proprietary algorithm or was it created by some other company that's in the business of doing these statistical PAT analysis? Um, yeah, so, so ours isn't a, a part average testing. We're generating our own models. Um, you know, this, this was just, the middle one was really just an example. Uh, of the way that you set limits. And uh, the point that I forgot to make as part of it is, you know, depending on where you set these limits, these latent defects are really hiding behind the curve. So you would never know that they were there because they would look like good parts given this uh, histogram based approach. Now we're not trying to replace this approach. You know, we're saying it's a great approach. It might mean that you have slightly wider limits and then you're using this other thing to augment to find those latent defects that are hiding behind the curve. So, okay. And then uh, one one last question: uh, Does your tool do the recommendation as to how many of these agents should go on an IC, or does does somebody have to have enough knowledge to say, mm. you know, here's the trade-off between area on the die and the coverage I'm going to get from this? Our our insertion tool will help show you the trade-offs about you know, the number of agents, the types of agents, what you're going to learn, and the impact of those agents. So you can then make the trade-off about what's the right level uh, and the insertion. So we then also integrate with your um, your whole place and route flow. So we we take an early net list, we, we do this analysis, and then we integrate with how um, you're actually doing the layout. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's very compatible with uh, every major EDA flow today. Great. Okay. Thank you. I want to thank everybody once again and wish everybody a good rest of their day. So thank you, everyone.